recording. Well, and that's how you know, you know we're in business when I think Stuart just cracked a cracked a Bev. But what Bev? I mean, it's definitely Diet Mountain Dew. Dun, dun, dun. Are you sure? Do you crack I mean, another Bev? Be... <laughs> Dude, was that two Bev? <laughs> what, 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 what shit! <laughs> so we got a liquid death and a monster. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Once I saw the the, the LD, I knew. I know what I realized. I need to stop doing this weekend. I scratched sure. my nose. I just did at the beginning of this video. I scratched my nose like this. And every yeah, I've, well, I've and, noticed and I did that, that a lot. I did. I did that walking out of a fucking bathroom this weekend, and somebody was like, "Did did you just do blow in there?" I was like, "No, <laughs> like what?" Yeah, yeah, no. like, give our show a, a much needed edge where we're like, "Yeah, someone right. does." We we do have. Some, uh, dependency issues i just yeah, come in here one. fucking super angry at everybody and just with a thousand great ideas for the podcast yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like we've actually been in this lobby for like an hour and a half jack's just been yelling for like a last like the last 90 <laughs> minutes he just tore all of us an asshole <laughs> you didn't even have the heart to tell me the first 30 minutes i was on mute yeah, <laughs> yeah like, we didn't hear it he's really <laughs> worked he's really worked up dude <laughs> They're like dude this guy's a fucking genius just let him go <laughs> like this guy is smart as shit turn him loose baby uh, oh, yeah, I, I realize I scratch my nose like I'm uh, like I'm going through the fucking twelve steps. Well, don't worry. Yeah, I, I usually put in my contacts right before the show, so my eyes are fucked up. Yeah, so Stuart just Stuart Stuart's actually blind all day, and then he puts in his fucking <laughs> he puts in his eyes to come to come on that's the how, show. That's, that's how right. he keeps his day job. He has that Superman eyeglasses dynamic. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. comes off here and becomes a podcaster late at night and podcast by night. yeah we actually we don't stream that we don't even we block this out for springfield in general just so the people he works with don't, don't know his eyes work like he has to keep up the shtick so we're like you know he's just it was really easy we like we actually had to make one phone call and the guy was able <laughs> yeah, to cut, the guy. cut the three internet connections in springfield off from receiving our show so yeah yeah <laughs> we just paid somebody to go to that one, that one we paid him 72 dollars <laughs> we blacked out and, green county and, and most of that was gas money gas <laughs> money and fucking cigarettes <laughs> oh my god so yeah that's so anybody in springfield we're sorry for the internet outage that was us but um but other than that so how how was how was christmas fellas cold awesome. it was, it was cold, cold as fuck dude i hate it I actually hate it now. It's still cold as fuck. I've but never we're... experienced negative 30 until this past weekend. And that was fucking, or like the wind chill was negative 30 in St. Louis. Yeah. And that, that shit was no fucking joke. Uh, now I feel like it's that kind of effect though, where now I'm back down in Nashville and everything seems fucking like, it seems so warm. I went out the, the car this morning. It was like 25 degrees. It felt, I was like wearing just a hoodie. I was like, this feels fucking great. Because all weekend I've been just trudging in sub zero tundra of St. Louis. Yeah, okay. it was fucking terrible. I I mean it was like 30 degrees here today, though. It was nice. Sun was out, fucking snow was melting. <laughs> it's it was nice. Tight. Yeah, like, for real. It's it like was... an abusive, it's like an abusive boyfriend. <clears throat> it's just like, yeah, uh, he didn't give me a it's like the fucking black eye thing. It's like, yeah, it's not negative 30 now, so it's 30 degrees. It's a really nice day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm yeah. fucking I'm fucking loving this weather. At least I can see out of both my eyes still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it, but it, it's been fucking terrible. But other than that, it was a good little weekend. I mean, it, I, I'm glad it didn't snow as much as, I mean, it snowed good that first time, but they're saying like we were going to get three more inches a night or two ago and we didn't get shit. So we didn't get that. We didn't get that Buffalo snow. Holy shit. Did that Saturday red zone fuck with any of you guys too? I was not expecting it and then i realized all i mean you guys are in the fantasy playoffs so you were probably very mindful of of when the games were this weekend but i was not and when when scott hansen pops up on my tv on, on a saturday morning and i'm like oh shit this is going down now i was like, you naked you're like ah. yeah, dude, yeah you caught dude. your dick in your hand i was it was christmas eve i wasn't expecting it. i was like oh i gotta get some shit done and then all of a sudden noon rolled around and i was like oh all the football's going on right now yeah, yeah. When anytime there anybody asked me to do anything this weekend, I was like, "But my football family." I'm like, <laughs> you know, like I got they're they're here, they're in town all weekend, baby. Okay, <laughs> they're in town Saturday and Sunday. But yeah, it was they're a good needy. week. 
and they're needy as fuck. And Saturday though, that I, you know, it was nice having all those all, all the football games. None of my teams won. I mean, the Eagles fucking shit the bed. And I mean, I mean, look, here's the thing. I think the Eagles look really good, but Carter Minshew. Um, and then the Browns suck. So you know, it was it was a it was a shitty football weekend for me. But other than that, it was good. I enjoyed it. <laughs> like, Sounds it was like, like the, it. It was like a good weekend other than other than sports. Like everything that happened other than everything that happened during the weekend. Yeah, other other than everything sports related that happened on the weekend. Everything was phenomenal for the most part. Stu, what was your big ticket item? What did the missus get you? Oh shit. Dude, you must whip it. I whip it good. Whip it, dude. You must yeah. be whipping it good if fucking you get a hat like that for Christmas. <laughs> You're fucking right about that. <laughs> It, the, the Devo Energy Dome. That was the the token gift of Christmas. What'd you get? Was... Did you get a new dog? <laughs> yeah, no. She she didn't like what I did with the last one, so she doesn't think I'm ready for that kind of responsibility. Yet, he so. went back down to yeah. guinea pig. Yeah. No, she's actually. <laughs> oh she's actually, no, no. Jack will never t- own anything that looks like a guinea pig or a hamster ever again. Look, no, this is where I'm. That, that, that's nom, where the trauma started. So this, I have nom flashbacks from uh, Sergey Ovechkin, my Sergey Ovechkin, the coolest my Russian, hamster of all. My Russian gerbil, or the gerbil, <laughs> yeah, <sighs> yeah. Well, um, actually, my my girl's testing me out on uh, something a little bit low, lower risk than a dog. She she wants to see how I do with a pair of AirPods, so that's what I got for Christmas. So, <laughs> so not lose if, I, if I if I can go two whole months without losing it, she said she'd think about or throwing consi- it. On think the about ground. considering <laughs> thinking about getting pissed getting... off and chucking it. <laughs> right, ends up in the washing <laughs> machine. She's like Jack, you got to get this shit under control. She's like, we can't have anything else living in here until you until you realize. You can't the just kill everything. Just have actions. Yeah. Yeah. You can't no, she's fucking... she she's gonna she's gonna wear me out on this one because I've already lost the AirPods like twice. So <laughs> fucked. Like, yeah, dude. It's yeah, all right. This dog's, well, not, maybe... this dog's not happening. Maybe by episode. Maybe by our one hundredth episode, that'll be like what we surprise our guests with. Jack, it's a new dog, and Jack Jack has not only finished his top G training, but he is also a fucking like he's gone through his re his rehabilitation of <laughs> of. Of not wanting I'm to top harm dog, everything. Dude. No, yeah, I'm top he's top. Dog, yeah. He's just top dog. So he's got all the dogs, and uh, dude, and basically and at dog, that point, any of dog the bounty hunter presented to me. Well, yeah, and at that point, your girlfriend can't even tell you shit. I mean, you're just gonna over. Even if you're not ready for a dog, that's when you just say, <laughs> "Yeah, I graduated. Get the fuck out of my way." Like, I mean, your dog, your daddy at that point. So it's like dude. you're getting a dog, whether whether it's safe or not. But what would be the most dog event you could host? It would be like Snoop Dogg playing it, Dog the Bounty Hunter doing security. Uh, you got, I mean, a, a dog show. I want got, Nate Dogg. I want Nate Dogg. You got Nate Dogg playing. He's, Clifford, I mean, rest in peace. Clifford the Big yeah. Red Dog. Um, you got, there's a couple other dogs. There's Scooby Doo. He's a dog. <laughs> He's for sure a dog. Yeah. Well, and um, uh, Zach Wilson's got that dog in him. Not anymore. You know what I mean? Not, not on got, the field. I think I think that dog got put down. Yeah. Is, what, is what do, you, do you think like all those stories like that were uh, in the off season about him banging milfs were just like him trying to like make sure he got that chance his second year? The dudes in the locker you know? room actually respected him. Yeah, he yeah, put out that part of the story up. too. He's like, Yeah, I I banged a milf, and now the dudes in the locker room totally respect me. <laughs> Meanwhile, like, meanwhile, Mike White's walking around with his fucking anaconda dick, and and he, and he's just like, they're like, damn, like everybody's like, this guy's a quarterback, but look at that guy. They're like, there's a there's a constant shadow in this room, and it's not Mike White's play; it's his big old dick, and and it's like we need to get this guy on the field. And I read something the other day where like they were like he might be out for like a couple games, and then like the next morning he's like cleared. He's like fuck no. He's no, like Dude, I heard the story that this. he was literally going around New York trying to find a doctor who would. He clear went to him. ten. He went to ten of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's ten like, fucking doctors. The other nine were not- like, "You will die if you get on the field." And the other one was like, "There's some witch doctor." He's like, "Dude, fuck it, get out there." <laughs> he's like, "Dude, get that Go shit ahead. out there." Yeah, the, the doctor's fucking smoking anyway. a the doctor's smoking a cigarette in his face. He's like He's like, "Wait, one question. Did you get the COVID vaccine?" "No, you're good." He's like, "Okay, get out there. You're safe." <laughs> Some total anti-scientist. Yeah, as long as you didn't Crack. get that fucking gov shot, you know, that's all that matters. As long as you don't he, get the chip. 
he went into the, he went into the waiting room and pulled a number like it's a fucking deli like, <laughs> yeah. to, to this fucking and place. it was some dude's basement it was like some yeah. basement like it was like some line up the stairs and like he lives and, and like he doesn't own the top half like he's one of those guys that just rents the basement <laughs> you know what I'm saying like like there's a, <laughs> there's a family upstairs and like he's just got this back or like they're they're like weaving in and out of kids toys you know in the backyard trying to get downstairs to see Doctor Fucking he, Vegas. He, he tries to make Mike White leave with a bag of Kratom. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, he's, like, he's like, just, just in case. He's like, just here's two case. bags of Kratom. It's the same doctor that my sister paid $99 to to get medical marijuana. Yeah. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> it's a dude. teledoc. Yeah, dude. I'll never forget when I went to uh, California with... You know, I went to California for like fucking 24 hours. Remember, I told that story back in the day on on your right. the other on the other podcast. Shout out two dudes and a bra. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, but um, we were we were walking down the fucking uh, like the strip down there, and there was literally they just had like homeless guys outside, like waving you inside, and like they that like that was like the deal. Like if you get you can sit outside. And panhandle, as long as you're while you're panhandling, you get people to come into our store. And like that's what it was. So we fucking walked in. We all sat in a waiting room while one of us, I won't say who, it wasn't me, but uh went in, was there for like 20 minutes, told the guy he had trouble sleeping, and he came out uh a hundred dollars later with a and, and it was so funny because they only sell month. So like back then you could sell like you could buy like a like a month long card or something for like while you were in town, and we were only there for like a yeah, like a permit. And we told the guy that we were only there for one day. So the guy scratched out the fucking one month <laughs> and put one week. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, like it was like, just the most crooked shit. Dude. So, um, not me, uh, went to, uh, California and had called a telehealth doctor after, uh, that person had already paid like 50 bucks online. And when, when I called, when I called the doctor, <laughs> um, when I called the doctor, it was, um, he was like, so like, why do you think you'd be a good candidate for medical? And I was like, yeah, I just like have anxiety sometimes. And like, it helps me with my appetite. And he was like, man, he's like, that sounds like a good case, a good reason to do with medical marijuana. And he's like, I'm going to prescribe you a card. And I was literally doing this in the back of an Uber on the way to like the hotel after I landed. Like yeah, it was it's, that it's that easy. It was that easy back in the day. Yeah. It's, but now, now in two months, well, I think it's already legal here. Like, I think it's already like, it's already legalized here. I think it was like December 8th is when it became a league, like legal here, but like the sales. It. Yeah. So, the, but the sa the sale, the selling, and the sales. Jesus Christ, I just had a stroke. Um, of of marijuana will will happen in February. So, uh, we're almost there. Like, we're fucking, we're just token, dude. Okay, like that's what we're doing now. Legal, almost, almost. Well, I'm token. So, uh, I'm ready. It, it, it's good shit. Yeah, Stu Stu's just been on the fucking outskirts for like I don't know how long. Deck, almost, nah, almost ten years, five years. Dude. Five years. I wouldn't say ten years. Almost eight. Eight years, dude. Unreal. You, Stuart, to celebrate, you should on the podcast eat one of those like uh rings of death or whatever that Joey Diaz eats. It's like five hundred <laughs> milligrams of THC in a gummy. And the ones where like Joe Rogan's like, just eat the foot. Oh, <laughs> like, the star I would just love Yeah, the star of death. That's it. Yeah. I need to get one of those. Uh yeah, I would should do that. I would if I ate that, I would be like crying on the ground. Like at this point, I could. Eat I do like not handle those milligram, things well I'd probably at all. Fucking intergalactic. It's gonna be all right, dude. Well, we're gonna get you back in there. I can't wait. I can't wait. The good old days, dude. There Dr. was a day. Nick, Doctor Nick is in the office. I was gonna, gonna say if you got if you want me to, I can. I'm. I well, I'm listening. I'm. I'm marking down. I'm looking at all of Stewart's mannerisms, and I'm thinking like, man. One of his eyes is twitching. You know, I'm, I'm kind of like taking note and I'm like, these are these are the reasons why you need to get high. You know, so by the end, of, by the end of this episode, I'll be able to I'll have your diagnosis done and uh, and we'll and I'll tell you why you need to be getting high. But dude, there was a time where Stu was puff, 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 puffing. And I mean, there was a time where actually I was just telling somebody about this, about the if you go into my gr my grandma's house, 
uh, the one, you know, the one that found out that Stuart was touching us. Um, <laughs> if you go into her backyard, I don't know if they found it or not, but we broke a bong. We did shot bury. us. We yeah. Bury shot us. <laughs> so I had a, so I had a, a rate, like a Rasta colored bong and we called it Shada. And, and it was like, I mean, it was such a fucking hitter, dude. It was like the bong of like, I mean, it was like the, the longest owning thing I had forever. And it broke. Cause we thought the cops were coming. We got really hot. We were getting super high in my grandma's garage. <laughs> That's something that happens when you get and like, we you were think, sitting you, there and like, you think the cops are paranoia. Yeah. mad paranoia. So like, and we were like, this is years and years ago. And like the, we think the cops are coming around that. So we're in my grandma's garage or, and we're in the subdivision and it was like in the middle of the night and you can, in the middle of the night at my grandma's house, you can hear. And like where Stuart used to live, you can hear at night police, from like six streets over you know what i'm saying like you could hear like it sounded like it was all like going if you, shit going down olive you know you would hear stuff like it would just sound like it was in your backyard so we thought cops were coming so we stood up real quick kicked the bitch over and broke it uh and then we uh buried it. it it was a proper funeral it was raining outside and we went outside and we buried it under my grandpa's garden in my uh in my grandma's you house you played taps played gave yeah seven, yeah, yeah. Seven, the seven gun salute so I'm hoping that whoever lives there now has either found it or one day does find it because dude, that thing was a, that thing was a tank. So. Shot us, dude. I just think of shot us. Bomba Clate. Bomba Rude boy. <laughs> dude, rest dude, in peace, I, Teddy I, Ruckshot. I think Nick saw that, Nick, I think you saw that movie like a month before I saw it. And I, I remember you were just like, you were, we were you had the, you had the, you I had the slam. Yeah, you had the slang and everything, and I was like, "Bro, what?" I was like, "Who the?" I was like, "Why the fuck am I being called a rude boy?" <laughs> like, Dude, what is I'm this? fucking that movie. I I will argue with this forever. There are people, you know, there are movies like Belly and and uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. Uh, you know, some of the other hood hood classic movies. Um, harder they think, come. Harder they come. You know, but I'm trying to think of like uh, I'm trying to think Boys of, in the Hood. Boys in the Hood, but not Step even it up. Belly. Why can't I think of it right now? Hold on. This was this was some formative. Painful, painful. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, painful is a great movie. Um, well, yeah. but if this movie had the budget that any of these other movies would have had, I think this movie is already my favorite, like hood classic, like movie. But if this would have had the but it's it's a low budget film. So like there's parts of it. Are you trying it, to like, say that this is a certified hood classic? Oh, it is, oh, this is a hood classic. Hundred percent. I absolutely. absolutely, dude. I used to I used to talk to the cooks at, at Tucker's Steakhouse about this dude, movie. The budget was two hundred thousand dollars estimated. That's fucking yeah. insane. It's insane. There's a part All in the movie. Money. There's a part in the movie where they run in, run up on Teddy Brookshot while he's eating in a Chinese restaurant, and they pistol whip this guy because he stands up, and they pistol whip him like in the right side of his face, and then like they pan away because he's like motherfucker. You know, he starts talking shit or whatever. And then they pan right back to the guy, and the other side of his face is bleeding. <laughs> you know, say like the <laughs> left side. He's, yeah, he's bleeding out of the left side of his face. It's just like everybody's like, just stoned. Get... There's no continuity. Yeah, you know, it's Kaimani Marley. You know, so Bob Marley's like, who he? he it's he funny because was... that one's especially is a hard one to fuck up because you just Ragabins. did blood and makeup on one side of the face, and you're like, cut, fuck it, come back. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, like somebody oh, saw oh. that. And they're like, dude, just leave it. <laughs> like, leave, fuck yeah. it. Dude. No one's gonna notice. That. No one's and ever it. gonna notice. In a cameo by a very young, very thin uh, DJ Khaled. We the best. Yeah, that was back before anybody knew who DJ Khaled was. Wyclef that Jean, was when, dude. Yeah, so that, and that's where, so there's a part in the movie where he pulls up on Wyclef and his little kid, and Wyclef's little kid starts talking all this shit and standing in between Wyclef and his little mouthy ass kid. And that's when he's like, you better, he's like, you better get your kid or whatever. Uh, little skinny ass DJ Khaled sitting, like, standing Random right in the middle. Khaled. And you're like, what the fuck? Like, I did. For it, I saw that. I didn't know that for like years after I even saw that movie. So like, it's but it's a hood classic. So if anybody has not who hasn't seen that movie, fucking watch it. It is low budget. What are you doing? But it is Dude, why the, the soundtrack. Could, why club should have hit him with the where is the love? It's, I'm trying to think. Of, well, that what, what what was he doing at this time? I mean, this movie was what like oh or very oh, early 2000, 2002. 2002. 2002, 2002 so so the fujis were already a thing so wait what was what why the what fuck was, did we just say why clef gene was in the fucking yeah black eyed peas from the fujis 
Yeah, not black eyed peas. Yeah, that's why I said why are the Fujis Wy- were already a Wyclef thing. Wyclef isn't black eyed peas. That's will no, I that's am. Will I am. Damn. Oh, I dude, dude. give me your fucking Come card. On, <laughs> where, where, yeah, when you said where is the love, I just wanted to. I just kind of we just moved past it. Okay. Uh, but uh, well, well, fuck. They They're do the look same the same though. They do yeah. look the same. I'll give you that. They do look the same. But why? It's like the same is, time. It's the same time period. It's just the early two thousands. It's just fucking with me, dude. I, I was always. I'll. I'll never forget. Like he, here, this was a dilemma I had as a as a county white kid in high school. When I found out, so I had a huge Tupac phase. Love Tupac, my guy. I mean, I still love Tupac. I'll still argue that Tupac is. I, I mean, I, I used to be like one of those like fuck Biggie guys, you know, growing up. I love Biggie Smalls now. Like he's arguably one of the best. But um, when I found out that Tupac had a beef with the Fugees, I was so sad. <laughs> I was like, damn. I was like. So like if I like if somebody ran up on me right now and they're like, dude, Tupac or Fuji, it's like you have to pick a side. I don't know what to do. Fuji's. See, oh, I'm going. Oh, it's Pac for me. So like, but but Fuji La, but do Lauren Hill? I mean, look, Lauren Hill didn't even want, didn't even want me to buy her records. Okay, Still so doesn't. fuck you, Lauren Hill. <clears throat> but uh, I do love your music and you're a legend. But you know, whatever. But yeah, I, I I was so disappointed when I when I when I threw on that what is it, Ride on our enemies or whatever, and he goes, man. Fuck the Fuji. <laughs> I'm like, damn. Like, <laughs> damn. Dude, they're beefing. They're beefing. You know, Tupac's dead already at this point. Well, dead already at this point. You know, he's already in fucking Cuba. Where is where is Tupac Jack? <laughs> already. I, you know, I don't even know that one. He's like, that's that's a couple levels of Illuminati knowledge that I, I was gonna even. say. I yeah, think I've that not- might. Is that the darkest Illuminati secret? Bro, that's like a seventh degree Freemason knowledge. I don't have that kind of shit. Like that's one of those things. Like you're you were like ancestral born. Like it's like the Coca-Cola. It's like the Coca-Cola recipe. Only two people on the planet and actually know where he is at any given time. <laughs> Jimmy Hoffa, Tupac. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those are like there's like these three things. They're like, oh, you want to know they're JFK? Yeah, we killed JFK. We killed Martin Luther King. We fucking did 9-11. We did all this other shit. They're like oh, MK Ultra. Fuck all that shit. They're like, Pac. Not yet. No comment. Yeah, no they, comment. they do the press. Yeah, they do the press <laughs> conference. Government comes That's clean. And then everybody, the last qu- everybody's like just rubbing like any more questions and somebody's like yeah whatever happened to tupac and they're like all right that wraps up the meeting that for wraps today. it up <laughs> that guy gets taken out of a separate door <laughs> they're like, just, they're like, just on, two gunshots r- immediately ring out like come on bill you remember when you got the credentials there were two things you can't ask we told you <laughs> there were two things you can't ask and you asked one of the two so that is that's it but yeah, no, I I was super sad when that happened. Uh, but Wyclef is a Wyclef is a pussy in that movie anyway. Uh, in shot as he was a little bitch, um, and he never did get dealt with. But he did uh, did have one of the coldest scenes in that movie, and that's when he's telling uh, what's what's his face the the fucking joke in the movie or in the car dangle. I think it was dangles uh, that he kills in the car. But oh, Wyclef's yeah, yeah, yeah. telling that fucking he's like telling them that stupid corny joke and haha the and then like line. as soon as the punchline comes out he pull, yeah he pulls the gun out and shoots him in the fucking head like and dude that was cool as shit like that was that was one of the cooler parts but um yeah he was kind of a pussy in that movie but yeah if anybody out there has not seen shot as and you're fans of like painful uh all those movies like that uh belly you know stuff like that this is the fucking movie i'm telling you city of it god was so good that you named a bong after it so good i named a bong after it and like all, all my we didn't friends name our, that, we didn't name bongs after any fucking spike lead joints yeah spike yeah and fuck the knicks <laughs> okay so um collateral collateral fuck the knicks dude fuck new york um nick's just mad that spike lee portrays italian americans the way that he does <laughs> yeah, yeah i just have like this nick just nick's ever has had a, yeah has had a beef ever since then every italian's got a Pack of cigarettes rolled up their sleeve. Hey, I'm walking. <laughs> yeah, and you can say whatever you want to me. You can call me, call me a day go, call me whatever you want to call me. But you start talking about Spike Lee, I'm fucking out of here. You know what I'm, <laughs> I'm not playing that shit. Okay. Um, oh, but yeah, yeah, dude, check out, check out that, check out that movie. I made every one of my friends watch that movie a hundred fucking times. Especially when we moved, when I had, when I moved into the West County house, I had the basement, oh. and I can't tell you how many times me and friends of mine uh and people i won't name it i mean there there are so many times that we were coming off of just any drug you can name we were coming down just melting in our basement with shot is on in the background uh, that or the departed 
I have probably, I probably watched the departed 600 times in that house. Like it was just one of those movies that just can always I on. You, can I tell you the part of the departed? And it, it, I mean, it's, it's truly trivial, I guess, but it just goes against Martin Scorsese so much that it just really pisses me off is the, is at the very end of the movie with the fucking rat that goes across the railing. It's like, oh. Do you really yeah. need that much of like a drive home? Like, yeah, message? yeah, like, yeah, that just that that oh, that part was like that's for, for, for an otherwise an incredible movie, three hour journey for that to be the ending is just like it's like he I had didn't... to explain his movie, yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know, exactly. I kind of thought it was very, like, <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, like, fuck off, Martin. Like, I'm if, if all dumb. of you, if, if you, if you fucking <laughs> idiots didn't understand, just so you knew. He's the rat. <laughs> like, I always kind of thought it was like a like a noir throwback because back then they really kind of like hand fed you shit. And yeah, like, but that was back in the time when half the people who went to movies couldn't even read; they had to actually have sound to go to the movies. And that's the time when Martin Scorsese was influenced <laughs> to become a filmmaker. <laughs> yeah, true, I mean, you remember, he's the one that hates all the Marvel movies, right? Just like who just comes out and just like hates yeah. hates them. He who, like has been who's like, dude, these aren't even movies anymore. He There's says no they're acting, like a theme, and he says a theme park. Yeah, well, he's yeah, a, Martin. Yeah. Look, dude, shut he, the he fuck up. He says none of the famous actors are actually known for their acting. They're just known as, like, you're Iron Man, you're Superman, you're Batman. Look, I don't care who... Nobody can sit here and tell you... tell can, Nobody can confidently say that Robert Downey Jr. didn't murder Iron Man for all those years. Like, he was the perfect... But I think, I, I think that kind of goes to Scorsese's point, is that now Robert Downey Jr. is just Iron Man, and nobody else can be Iron Man. And that's I just don't like, know. There's a lot... I mean, I, I'm just telling you I, I, to kind of go yeah, on... Yeah, yeah, no, for to, sure. To, yeah, to and I... Yeah, you said he's an old school guy, but I always thought that his like how like he goes out of his way to shit all over him. It's kind of funny, but yeah, that a part of dude. I, what were you gonna say? I was like, the Irishman didn't need to be that fucking long Scorsese. Yeah, f- straight the fuck up. And why do you got Italians playing the Irishman? Like all the fucking Irishmen in the movie are Italian. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like I always thought that was so funny. Like Joe Pesci. Like, well, I guess it's the Irish. Well, even uh, well, I guess he's it's the Irishman doing all these jobs for the Italians. But it's like even De Niro, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, you got all these guys. It's like, I don't think anybody in that movie was Irish. So, it's, Hey, my name's fucking O'Callaghan. And, and, <laughs> and all the, and all the shit that came out after that movie, you find out that that guy was apparently like all those people that were alive with that guy are like, he was a bullshit liar anyway. Like all that stuff was made up and like yeah. none of that stuff was even like, he was never that cool at, anyway. So it's like, you watch like a 12 hour movie about some guy that was just bullshit. So it was a good movie though. I have to admit, right. I, didn't, I didn't sit through the Irishman. Yeah, I mean, it was it wasn't great. I've never watched it again, but I well, I did. Look that it. was like Pesci was that, really good. So, what would you take? That would you take the the Irishman or the Zack Snyder cut? I didn't have ne- I if you still get on my HBO right now, it, I am still have not played the end of. I still haven't watched the second half of the Zack because I at least finished the Irishman. So, dude, I'll, I'll throw fucking Spike Jones a bone or Spike Lee a bone. Uh, of the Netflix movies that came out that year, I like The Five Bloods better than The Irishman. So I need to watch that movie. I've heard that movie's really good. The Five Bloods? Yes. Very good. Yeah. Spike Lee. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I give Spike, I like Spike Lee's spunky little ass. I like watching it. You know, he brings me some joy and watching him be running around the sidelines acting like a fuckhead, you know, and, and like, you know, I hope he gets to, has he, have the Knicks ever won? Am I am I an idiot? Or have the Knicks have the Knicks won an NBA Not championship since, since like he's seen seven, it? Well, it, maybe it was AWA. I hope um, he sees one. Like you know. seventy six. Ewing didn't win any, right? No, no, oh, no. Ewing blew that in fucking the up. That's, what, that's what I was saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, that's what I was saying. Ewing didn't oh, win, any, right? Poor yeah, two, Patrick. Two championships. One in the seven. One in nineteen seventy. One in nineteen seventy three. Okay, so he's definitely seen it. But yeah, Patrick Ewing, all them years, poor guy. Wasn't Big enough. ugly. Why he's um, selling those subpar shoes? Yeah. Or yeah, and he and well, he the Knicks, looked, the Knicks well, cheated to he? get or the the and you guys know the conspiracy about how the NBA rigged the '84 draft so that the Knicks would get him, don't you? You ever heard I that don't. conspiracy? No. So the conspiracy, yeah. So the conspiracy was this was um, uh, Stern's first year, I guess, uh, as the commissioner of the NBA, okay. and his favorite hometown team was the New York Knicks. Right. And so the 84 draft was the year they first instated the lottery. And I think it was the bottom, like 10 or eight teams got thrown into the pool and the big ball spins. And, you know, they, they, um, 
pull out the team who wins the lottery. So they were drawing for the first overall pick and you can go and there's video evidence on YouTube of this too. So the two main theories are if you watch the video, uh, the Knicks card and they're big cards they are like 12 inches by 12 inches pieces of like cardboard stock. Theirs is the only one. The Knicks with the corner is bent. And also um, there's another theory that says all the letter, all, all the team names were put in there, but they froze the envelope with the Knicks in there. So the, when, when the thing is tumbling, you can see Stearns looking straight ahead. He's not looking down below like this, but he like, Fondles around, throws away like two or three envelopes and grabs the next one right away. And uh, the theory is kind of supported because like the NBA was having a really hard time at that time after the ABA merger. And yeah, the New, big, York big market, New York market was like the really big market that they needed to kind of tap into. And Ewing was a and or he was an NCAA uh all star, uh, he had. I think he won the tournament that year beforehand, or he was the nation's most outstanding player. I know he won Georgetown. that award, yeah. yeah. Isn't he coach Georgetown now? Yeah, yes, he is. Yeah, and so, um, yeah, that's kind of like the main conspiracy about how the 84 NBA draft was rigged. That's wild. I there's yeah. also one, I don't know, I don't know like the backstory of it or anything, but I know there's kind of a conspiracy about remember when the Cavs won the lottery two years in a row. Um, I remember that there was a big yeah. deal about that too. A lot of people were super pissed off about how, or it was, was like that two or three was that, years. Was in that a row. Wiggins? Wiggins, I think maybe Kyrie Wiggins. I, I'm trying to think what it was. Wiggins was I, one of them, wasn't he? Anthony Bennett, maybe. It might have been uh, Anthony yeah, Bennett. I think Bennett and Kyrie is who's coming to my mind. Yeah, I think. It, yeah, I got Anthony Bennett. Just makes me fucking sick. I will never, I will never forget what a bust Anthony fucking Bennett was. Jesus Christ. But yeah, they two years in a row went in the fucking and like the second year they won it, like their chances were like stupid low. Like I don't like there was it was almost like impossible that they were going to win this again. And they did win back. You're, back. you're wearing a shirt of another sports conspiracy. Con well, not that exact. Kinda, yeah. Two people, yeah. but the, Mon the, screw the, Mont the Montreal screw job was another uh, conspiracy. Dude, Well, here's the question. Stu it, if I would, hey, if I'm gonna hear a word about the Montreal screw job, I'm gonna hear it from Stu. Okay, well, look, he's well, yeah, he, but we have him on answer. retainer as the historian for wrestling here for a reason. Well, he's gonna have to tell us did did Vince McMahon screw Brett or did Brett Brett screw Brett? <laughs> oh my god, that's no. a classic line. The, 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 no, it, it's a work, dude, and we're all fucking marks. I agree. Brett knew it. The ref knew it. The world is a wrestling ring Vince and everyone's a mark. <laughs> maybe Shawn Michaels knew it. But there's no way that Vince McMahon is going to let Bret Hart on WWE television go WCW. No fucking way. It's a Yeah, work. dude. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I've kind of gone back and forth over the years, but because like because then you see like he like the spit he landed on that on Vince and you're like, Damn, well placed that's fucking a shot that's a head to hate loogie baby is what that is but like yeah i mean i, I agree after after finally Dude, watching you get one shot to spit on your fucking boss you better not he got up, he and hit him out. the he hit oh, the bro. spit of spits yeah he hit him with that Jez, jesse wales like clint eastwood like western like two like right yeah, in the, uh, yeah oh, Josie and, then, and then later walked out of the shower and knocked vince mcmahon out allegedly be, yeah, which you didn't catch on the fucking film, even though the wrestling with shadows people are really are filming backstage. You don't see that. Yeah, you yeah, see everything fucking else. Yeah, you see everything else, but but with him cold cocking Vinny, Vinny Mac. But yeah, I I agree. I think it was a work too. I you know, but dude, boy, has has any has any wrestling moment produced more heat ever? Like for a guy long term in a city, I mean, because like. HBK in Canada is like, I mean, it's like a it's, enemy number one. It is public is enemy number one. Oh yeah. Anytime they've ever gone back there, like they, he will, they will boo the, from the moment his entrance comes on to the moment. Canadians he, like, are so leaves. nice though. They don't like the heartbreak kid. They are so dude. It's so wild. How it like, th like there's booing and then there's like that booing. Like it, it's, it's, it's like Philadelphia fans, like, like booing, like a fucking, 
you know, the yeah, Cowboys. I mean, at their are, core, they are hockey fans. At their core, right, right, and that's what know, I'm saying. Like they, once you they dig down to out, the deep layers, yeah, it's like it's like the Canadians coming to Toronto. You know, what I'm saying like in Toronto's like you know that's like the Toronto fans or the Montreal fans, vice versa. And you're just like, once you that peel back that passion. Canadian goose feather jacket, you find an angry hockey fan underneath. Yeah, dude, they're all a little pissed off underneath. Yeah, they haven't won shit in in two decades, dude. They're pissed. Dude, so they got that Toronto Raptors championship though. They're holding they, on yeah, that. yeah, true that. And and boy, and and I just saw the replay of that shot that Kawhi hit not recently of like the fucking one that like he was able to squat on the, si- down. On the Sixers. Yeah, and watch the fucking shot. Like one of the coolest shots ever. But yeah. and man, I wish he had stayed there. That would have been so fucking cool. But okay, moving on to another co- sports conspiracy that go- involves the NBA. Do you guys think that Michael Jordan decided to leave the NBA and go play? a year in the major league baseball, or do you think they caught him gambling suspended him for a year in private and he got to put and he played a year of baseball to, before we answer that, time. before we answer that, the, our front office doing his, doing God's work like usual, the, the fucking uh, back-to-back lottery picks was Bennett and Wiggins. Um, so it was not Kyrie. Oh, and man. then we traded Wiggins. both of them for Kevin love. So, which is good. Cause yeah, and here's the thing. I mean, baby, Every year, there's like a little tiny rumor that we might go get Andrew Wiggins back, and like at this point, I think uh, uh, maybe not at this point because where we're at. But like you know, I always th- I always liked Andrew Wiggins, and then but it is what it is, and, and all that was part now. Of yeah, well, he's with what Golden State, right? So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so back to Jack's thing. Yeah, I don't know. I do don't you know think Michael? That. Do you think Michael that. Jordan was caught gambling, or do you think he just was like, "Fuck it, I'm quitting. I'm gonna play a year with the White Sox." I, here's the goddamn thing about fucking Michael Jordan. I, I, I don't understand. Like, let LeBron James owe a guy named Slim fucking money. Okay. That's all I got to say. Like, let LeBron <laughs> James get caught gambling fucking his life away if, to some. I mean, like, Michael Jordan was Wait, like, didn't missing. Michael Jordan get his, didn't his dad die because of a gambling? Well, death that's, that that's, die? so that's kind of like the, that they've never really, conf, it's never been confirmed, but there, uh, there's a lot of, that's kind of like what they think is that that, that was kind of like retribution to some daddy owed or, whatever but it's like michael jordan was trash okay and 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 i do i as a person not as a basketball player but um he is a piece of shit um i mean he still wears straight leg jeans it's 2022 the guy's a piece of fucking <laughs> shit Stuart. tell me he's not he's i mean he's an arrogant motherfucker he's yeah he's a piece of shit I mean, the guy literally, he literally wouldn't denounce. I mean, if you, if anybody ever watched, if anybody watched The Last Dance, I mean, the great, the is a great, great thing, great series, but you really get to see what of a, what a cocksucker Michael <laughs> Jordan was. I mean, the guys out here, like, he's he, like, holding wouldn't... like 30 year grudges over Isaiah Thomas. Like, Isaiah, fucking... Isaiah, yeah. yeah. But then you see like the parts of him, like, not denouncing racist politicians because like Republicans wear Nikes too. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> That'd be funny a- to like put him back in like the fucking civ- like civil rights movement, and he's like, "Wow, Martin Luther, you need to calm down a little bit because these yeah. guys buy can sneakers." You, too. Can you chill out, Martin? You're fucking up my <laughs> sneaker sales. No, uh, he's like uh, the he's like Donald Trump, where he's like, "Oh, there's 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 bad people and good people on both sides." Well, and not only that, uh, he went on to become. Say, stay, he might be the thing that we want you to hit. Say. He's arguably the greatest basketball player of all time. Not in my mind. He's one B bitch but um he's the worst general manager in sports history so or at least basketball <laughs> history so you went on to be the absolute worst fucking owner at not gm owner ever the charlotte hornets are an embarrassment now don't get me wrong he's got lamello now and they make a little noise and they're not as bad but like Gordon that is Hayward, a butthole discount. just organization gordon hayward and what they do with him nothing you know now he's back Stupid haircut now he's back but like all those misses think about all those years he just missed and missed and missed well it's like uh it's like uh the producers right the mel brooks play where he's like you'll make more money with a flop than a hit so he's like i'm gonna have the flop team just rake in that money from these sad fucks in charlotte and if i'm saying that the charlotte bobcat slash hornets were springtime for hitler they are springtime for hitler <laughs> for sure <laughs> i forgot because, about the bobcats i forgot they were the bobcats for this for those wilds yeah oh god he'll, he'll rake in the money from the uh the revenue sharing but you know he'll never have to pay for a fucking parade for a championship 
But to answer I, your question, I can quote Jack, obscure. I can I can quote obscure Mel Brooks <laughs> references. But the second you tell me to think of what the phrase is for a yin yang, my brain just goes off. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, dude. I, yeah, I. <laughs> it's so funny. He's like, he's like, dude. He's like a yin yang. He's like, dude, my brain <laughs> like, was fucked like, up. Bro, I, I was. Lost. <laughs> but to answer your question, I do think that there is a there is a good chance that he. I think in that situation, the NBA knew that he had this fucking dream to go play baseball. And I think it was kind of like a, okay, yeah, maybe you should just go do that for a few, you know, just for a little bit. Cause like, it, like it's Brock cool. Lesnar playing football. Yeah. It's going to help us all. It'll cool, you know, it, it'll cool down everything. It'll get the heat off of us. Uh, go suck at fucking baseball for a little bit. And right. then, um, and then come on back right. and win three more. You know, because it's kind of un, like it's unprecedented in sports, really, for somebody to do something like that. I feel like you know, not not the two sport thing, but to like get go in trouble or just go get in trouble in one sport and go play another. It's not like fucking like <laughs> imagine you know, if Tom Bertuzzi just like picked up a fucking like just went and played football. <laughs> yeah, they're like, like, they're like who's this new guy? They're like, oh, he just paralyzed a guy and ended his career in another sport, so he's just. <laughs> He's he's with us now. He, he's in the minors. No, it's like, yeah, it's like fucking. You didn't see OJ Simpson going to hit the golf links or anything like that. You know, like, they're like, dude, they're like OJ. Look, you just have to leave football. Like, you just, just find a new sport. Juice, what you did was nuts. You got you can't be an actor anymore. <laughs> okay, so you just have to. Yeah, no more, no more driving around in SUVs. Just fucking chill out for a while. I heard Pete golf. Rose is really good at curling. Pete Rose is a fucking what a goddamn tragedy that is. Get Pete Rose in the Hall well, of you Fame. Said, you said I think you said it best. Uh, we talked Barry. about the Hall of Fame like a couple of years ago. Yeah, the two best baseball players of all time are in the Hall and of I Fame. And I don't think Pete Rose is like eligible anymore, right? No, no, he's not. And like he's already missed. You know what's yeah. so funny is like those are such fucking old boomer rules. Like I know, I just know it when our generation becomes like 50 and 60 that we're just going to be like, yeah, all those geezers are fucking dead now. We're, we're putting all, all of our boys are getting in. Dude, Mark McGuire's getting in. Barry Bonds getting in. A Rod's getting in. Fucking everybody in. I'm celebrating so hard when Pete Rose gets in, though, because I can watch like the Hall of the, the home run racing with McGuire and shit. And like, yeah, it's cool and all. And, and even with nostalgia, because I got to watch as a kid. So you think it would have this huge impression on me. I watch Pete Rose highlights. And I still get goosebumps when I watch that shit because you're like, well, this dude, because no one hustled like that. And he's just so crooked because isn't isn't Shoeless Joe in the uh, Hall of Fame? No, isn't Shoeless no. Joe Jackson in the Hall of Fame? I don't think so. He I thought was a he black was. sock. I don't know. I, don't, I think that's a, I think that's a permanent fucking ban. But front office, I, I think that I think that ban <clears throat> applies to them and their seed, he is all not. future generations. No, he is not. He is not. He is not. <laughs> That's but that. uh, I was, gonna say, I was gonna say, I always thought there was like a thing where like people were like, well, if he's in there, but either way, Pete Rose needs to. It, it is a fucking tragedy, and and like yeah, like you said, we're we're definitely gonna put him in there. Like Shoeless all these guys, Joe are... through the game. Pete Rose bet on himself. That's just confidence. Pete Rose has got a big dick for sure. I mean, the guy is. <laughs> <laughs> that guy is a set every time even like now even when you see him now he's got that spice to him like that fucker just got attitude like he he is so he fucking fuck shit. he hates the mlb but like loves the mlb like he loves the game fuck the mlb type thing and like i love it but uh i, I like the idea though of pete rose and like today's you know because everything is so like you know DraftKings, FanDuel, all the sports books oh, are so huge are so yeah. big now i think it would be funny to like see like pete like he knows the run line before the game. He's like, the opposing team can't score more than three runs. And Pete Rose is just starting his like fifth starting pitcher in a row, like like fifth inning, sixth inning, seventh. He's just like rolling. <laughs> he's rolling his top guns. He's like, dude, we, they cannot score another run, or we are fucked on this on this parlay. <laughs> How have they never got? They've never pegged him for a commercial. It just makes yeah, sense. Dude. Like DraftKings with Pete Rose, he killed a Skechers commercial. He anything had the to, anything to win, commercial. DraftKings, Pete Rose. Do you ever do you remember that Pete Rose commercial for Sketchers? I do, no. dude. That was where he's like, he's in his house and he's like, "Hey guys, it's Pete Rose in the hall," and he's just walking through the hallway of his house <laughs> and his wife, who's like Taiwanese and like a like a total ten, and she's like, "Pete, get out of the hall." <laughs> he's like, "In my own house." 
I was like, it's fucking great. Yeah, he that's good that. shit. Put him he, on a fucking... And then he hits her with the line, I still got your receipt, bitch. I'll send you back. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I'm... Re- <laughs> that's terrible. But, uh, uh dude, P- get P. Rose in the fucking Hall of Fame. Fuck, if, yeah. We, we want to be there. Like, and we, Barry. Oh. Yeah. And Barry, well, yeah, Barry needs to be there for sure. And I, I'm with Jack. I can't wait for, I can't wait for all these these gatekeeping fucking near deads to go away and and let us let us figure it out. Like let us let we're, us we'll, we'll fix time it. in the sun. We'll, we'll fix the history books. Don't I don't worry. know. Here's the thing. If I there, I have not met a single person in our our age who was around like for that '90s, like the steroid era. You know, or late '90s, early 2000s. Who. There are people who like maybe frown upon them cheating, but no one didn't enjoy it. Like no one. Like and if and if you were 26, 20 through like 33 or 31, you know, and you are one of those like, oh fuck the steroid era baseball, you're a pussy. You're and just like, a nerd. You're the fucking loser. And like, and there was no better time. Steven Glansberg. There's never been a better time in baseball. Like, I don't give a fuck what anybody says. It was, I mean, you had Cubs fans, whole, I mean, like in Cardinals fans, they didn't even care about the goddamn rivalry at that point. Like we were just watching two goddamn they didn't savages. They care about the game. No, you Nobody can't even care about the me. game. Nobody even knows who won the World Series. It's probably the Yankees or some shit. Who gives yeah, a fuck? Who fucking it cares? Was actually. Yeah, and no one cared who won the game in those games. Like everybody's like, oh, that, the yeah. Cardinals lost eight to two. Who cares? Because those two How runs were max shots. Hit? Yeah, those were two max shots and fucking Sammy hit a three runner. No one gave a fuck about the final score. Like yeah. it was, it was so. It cute. transcended Ra- the fucking game. Rafael Palmero, like I was watching them beat up my my boy Rafael in, in, in court hearings. I'm like, dude, lay off, okay? I never wanted to watch a Baltimore Orioles game in my fucking life until Rafi stepped up to the plate, and and when he was cracking fifty goddamn home runs, I was watching Have a bird. Okay, half of them were with that Cialis rock hard dick that he had, uh, dude. And I'm saying he, wa- I mean, he was rock hard for nine innings, just dude. cranking fucking dang, and still had some left over for his wife when he got home. Still went home and plot. I mean, he was probably fucking some of the players' wives before he left the stadium. He was like, I mean, you know, he was major <laughs> league in and in fucking that, that's kind of like why they, I, I don't really know if Rob, like all those like shots that everybody supposedly had seen him do in the locker room and shit. That, I mean. One, how do you know what's in that syringe? It could be anything. And two, you guys are probably just mad because he piped your girl. Like, yeah, who, you're just who are you gonna who are you gonna believe? Who are yeah. you gonna believe? Rafael Palmero or the guy whose wife has been getting piped by Rafael Palmero every yeah. day for two years? This guy just hit three fucking home runs. Had you know had seven RBIs and and didn't even hit, touch the field. He was DH in all game. And he came winked at my field, wife. Came off the field and fucking laid it down. Okay, we believe him. Always, I always believe him, and I always believed Mark. You know, don't put Mark in a corner like that. You know, yeah, he doesn't. He's not here to talk about the past. He's here to fucking talk about the future, and the future. Raphael, needs to Raphael be... always hit the ladies with the Raphael never stops at third base. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so fucked up. Hey, we yeah, we need to Rafi. If you're listening, we got we got something for you, but um. Yeah, I don't understand. I, I I don't understand the the what baseball's trying to do is it, if it's it, it, it's fucking dumb. Get get all these guys in the fucking Hall of Fame. Pete Rose, um, Michael it Jordan. A, it, but MLB, if anything, it could do it just to kind of save face. Fans don't have a lot of faith in the current management and overall direction of the league right now. Do that, that would be that would be a very easy way to kind yeah. of win people back. I agree. Well, and look what happened with Calvin Ridley. I mean, it's obviously not the same caliber of player, but a guy who bet on the game that he's playing, he only got suspended for one year as opposed to, you know, uh, totally being kept out of like the highest rank that he definitely achieved with, with Pete Rose. I just, you know, it's just kind of interesting, the dichotomy there. I'm like almost like, I don't know, 80% certain that Calvin Ridley like bet less than a thousand dollars too. What the fuck does that matter? You bet on the game or you didn't. No, but he was okay. He wasn't even playing in the. No, no, that's what I'm saying. He he bet on a game he wasn't playing, and he wasn't like betting like hundreds of thousands of dollars on. on he doesn't have the balls. That's a, that's just it's because Calvin is not he sweating that rookie contract. That's what I'm saying, dude. I'm and just, that, well, I'm, now he's playing for. I'm saying he shouldn't have gotten. Right? An, he shouldn't have gotten a year, in my opinion. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Playing what? He's in da- Jaxie. He's playing for Dougie P after this after this suspension's up, right? Yeah, that's where he got traded. I think. Yeah, he's where he got traded. Iowa, I didn't. 
Yeah, Calvin Ridley. He got, really tra- he got traded at the deadline. I figured yeah, he's now, correct. Wow. That's gonna be nasty, dude. Him and Christian Kirk. Whew. Him, Christian Kirk, Zay Jones. Zay, Zay Jones Zay. is a fucking yeah. baller. Fucking Travis Etienne. Tra- Trevor Lawrence is good at football. L- L- yeah, dude. So fucking it's a. it's good shit. Tough, but yeah, I, tough I, times I in the AFC South it. ahead. Yeah, football is just a depressing fucking sport. Um, what? A, so is hockey. I was just flipping over to see what the Blues are doing. Blues are playing right now. Um, who fucking cares? I mean, which Blues are we getting tonight? Are we getting yeah. the ones that are actually good and are fun to watch, or the absolutely we're getting depressing? The, we're getting the post fucking Alex Petrangelo trade Blues. God, well, it's like, watching him you know, score two goals on us the other night. God was not fucking fun. damn it. <laughs> What a fucking now and now his replacements on IR, so Story Krug is went on IR today. Yeah. Could what um, six weeks maybe? Who fucking cares? Stuart. <laughs> yeah. At this cares? point, this, yeah, it's all shit. Yeah. All I know is that Jordan Kyrie skated around for a little bit this morning. I don't know if he's playing or not. I know he's a game time decision, um, which is good. You know, good for him. I hope he's healthy. Is kind of shitty, um, but oh God, fuck sports. Yeah, sports suck. Um, but, uh, I guess we can talk about JJ Watt retiring today. That is big. That's a big, that's big news. I, you know, he's, he's I, having a good year. I'm glad yeah. he, he said, you know, he wanted to stop before he, somebody said today it. that he, they're like, he's stepping away and he's playing his the best football of his career. No. Slow down. I, Slow I down. wish what I wish <laughs> okay. 20, I think it was Schefter. 20, it was like Schefter or Jordan Schultz. It was one of those oh guys. God. 2012 wish, to 2014 was just fucking insane. Yeah, like yeah. he want. I wish my girlfriend loved me half as. I wish my girlfriend loved me half as much as T.J. Watt loves J.J. Watt. You ever oh see like a God. video? Yeah. You ever see a video of him like just talking about his brother? It's or like, so... are, have you ever just wa- rolled scrolled through Twitter while his brother's playing and he's not, and he's just like telling you that his brother's the greatest of all time, and like telling you that his brother's got a big old hairy nutsack, and like, like I mean, he and his jerks cum his taste, is, his cum tastes the sweetest of Jesus all of the ones he's tasted. It literally, I he t- tastes like a shot of rum chata. Like from what I, it's like a, it, 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 it he is, says he it burps is... his balls for more. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, just, I don't just, follow any fucking Steelers players. Oh my god! Did he yeah. burst his balls? <laughs> Dude, it's so you guys real, got though. a little bit more for TJ. There's more in there. I know there's more. No, TJ. TJ acts like he's not a good player in his own right, which is, I mean, like kind of like the crux of Dude, those. The fucking. <laughs> Dude, that's so good. He's like, he's like, I know, I know you're holding out. <laughs> Like, oh, that's a big one. Dude, that's so funny. <laughs> but you're so right. Like, that's I'm glad somebody else like noticed that because it is it is fucking <laughs> hilarious how much like he is in love with his brother. <laughs> yeah, dude. He, he he talks about how he's like the greatest of all time. And he's like, I'm not even half the player he was. And I'm like, mm, pretty sure you are, TJ Watt, defensive player of the it's, year. It's fucking cool. sack like sack record holder for like I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you're pretty good too, bud. Yeah, I was trying to find the tweet where that guy said that because it was like, I forget, it was either Shoals or somebody was like, yeah, JJ Watt stepping aside, yeah, play, while playing his the best, playing his best football. I'm like, bro, you are out of your fucking mind. This guy's a three time NFL Defensive Player of the Year, like very, very good year. Was he yeah. nine like, and a half sacks? He's like tore his pectoral like seven times. Yeah, okay. tell me that after seven it's pectoral like, tears, he's better than when he was before. Well, and here's then. the thing. Like, it, it, here's the thing. It's a good year for JJ Watt, just if he plays a three fourths of a season, just in general, because like he doesn't yeah. finish years. Like it's like it, he could have no sacks, and if he puts, if he gives you 15 games, like that's a W. Like and that's honestly, a, his, this past game was probably was arguably his best. Game his best game was a car. Yeah, it might have been one of his best games as a Cardinal. I mean, like, he was yeah. fucking wrecking hat. I mean, he's nasty. Maybe not. I mean, we've had some pretty monster games, like, in his era. Him and Chandler Jones. I was at Chandler Jones to start off the year last year. was, like, fucking 12 sacks in one game or some shit. Like, that was, like, yeah, five he had, sacks. He had five sacks against the Titans. I, I saw some Christ. people questioning whether or not he's a Hall of Famer. J.J.? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. God. Get the fuck Come out of here. They're like, he has oh, two 20-sack seasons. Yeah. And he won. And he won the uh, Man of the Year award, which pretty much already Walter puts Payton, you, yeah. yeah, yeah, for fucking that, that puts you like relief. to leap the head of like the average run of the mill good guy. No, he if if I mean I can't imagine if he had stayed healthy that entire career 
what his numbers would be. He'd probably be like two, three in all time sacks or whatever. Yeah, that's it's a shame. Like he is one of like the main um examples of dudes that just like who are just straight savages and one of the best, if not the best, at their craft and just could never stay healthy. Dude. If I yeah. had his talents, I would be insufferable. I would be such a prick. Okay. So he, he's hyper- kind of corny to me, though, too, just so you know. He's from Hypoth- Wisconsin. <laughs> They're hypothetically, all fucking balls. Hypothetically, he, retire, or he retires this year, and hypothetically, Matt Ryan, let's just, let's just say he retires next year, even though maybe he doesn't. Both Are both of those guys Hall of Famers? Matt Ryan? No. No. Matt it's Ryan not, is. I don't think it's a hall good. of. Uh, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. He's a hall of very good guy. I think. Him and like Philip Rivers. I always kind of put them in the same tier. Boat. Yeah. Yeah. Like they they stuck around for a long time, but like not every who, quarterback. Who else would be in JJ's retirement class? I'm trying to think. I mean, I guess Tom Brady. Tom Tom Brady might be in his class if Tom retires after this year. Um, class of 2028. I couldn't. I can't think that. Far. I don't know. That'd oh, be good. I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, but isn't it like, aren't you eligible five years after your last season or something like that? Isn't that how the yeah, Hall of Fame is? Yeah, 2020. I saw the, the Hall of Fame already tweeted congratulating him and saying that he'll be eligible in 28th. Yeah, I, th- I think it, he'll be a first ballot, honestly. Here we go. Uh, He's players eligible. Here are players eligible for the. Oh, well, hang on. It's, I was trying to find players eligible for the Hall of Fame in 2028. Well, I mean, Des like, Bryant is like the wide receiver version of what you're saying. I think. I think Frank Gore. Frank Gore is one. Oh, I would love to see that. I would love he's, to see. It, but I don't Frank think. He, I, think definitely, I think. He gets I think snubbed. Frank. Oh, see, I think Frank Gore. Gets I don't it. think he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. Well, I, because he's a running back, probably not. There's a bottleneck at the wide receiver position, but not so much the running back position. Yeah, maybe not first ballot, but I think he Frank Gore definitely gets in. He he had a couple. I agree. Up, I mean, his longevity is what makes his stats what they are. It's he not, had what like, nine he didn't thousand have, plus yard seasons, but high level. Did he have nine one thousand yards plus yes. seasons? Mm-hmm. He's like the third best. I know he's rusher, the third. I know. He? I know he's. I just what I meant. I knew he pl- he had the longevity for the the he big career Barry, stats, right? But I didn't know he had yeah, like really good season Barry. single season stats. Yeah, he had nine thousand yard seasons. That's um, really good. Only one double digit touchdown season, which was two thousand and nine, uh, with ten. But I mean. He's a running back, so you know it's. I I, I think he's it may, probably not a first ballot, but he's definitely getting it. He did, right. and he did get yeah. knocked out in a boxing match, so we can't forget about that. He did get fucking. He did get. Is knocked that is out. that points against Canton? <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Well, who knocked? Who is it that knocked him out again? Um, God, who was that? It wasn't uh, Le'Veon, Le'Veon Bell. Jones. Le'Le'Veon was Bell. Le'Veon yeah, Bell. it was Le'Veon <laughs> Bell. So yeah, maybe not, because I think Le'Veon's gonna. Le'Veon's another. Okay, so do you put Le'Veon in the Hall of Fame? No. I Too short. I, it's I, I think the end, the end of his career pretty much killed all of his chances for my opinion. Like, like Arian Foster. I think Antonio Brown goes. Uh, if they allow him, I think he does, but I, I don't know if they'll... Yeah. Dude, those dude, they're two, gonna need those, a lot of bronze to. You come, look at some of those dick. numbers, those couple years, like dude, those guys were unreal. Yeah, he was. Oh, yeah. AB was incredible, but sixteen thousand yard. Yeah, I mean, dude, he Frank Gore averaged four point three yards a carry. That's I good. Mean, that's that's service. Le'Veon had a season with two thousand all-purpose yards, more than two thousand. Thirteen hundred rushing, eight hundred and fifty passing or receiving. I'm sorry. I'm t- no offense, Dude, I'm Christian t- McCaffrey. Mc- Christian McCaffrey does the double thousand like every well, season. Doesn't it, it's a. I mean, CMC is probably a Hall of Famer for sure. I, I, it, and this yeah, is before CMC, and this is before yeah, that. This, you know, this is like team? he was kind of trailblazing in that. This is like some Marshall Falk shit. Yeah, yeah actually, sure. that's a good comparison yeah. to that. For season. a couple of years, I'm just saying, like, Le'Veon, like you said, longevity might be against him, but boy, like, if his numbers for that stretch were stupid. <laughs> like, yeah. it is, like, because it, it was one of those things, it was like Big Ben, like, he was the dump, like, he was either hitting AB or the dump offs were just fucking, like, I mean, Le'Veon was just getting hit and hit. Who else hit, was there? Mike, Mike Wallace? Or Mike Wallace? Mike Wallace. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he was Wallace. A, yeah, he, he was a stealer. Do you guys think David Martavis Johnson Bryant gets too. in? For, David Johnson gets in for just that one incredible fantasy football year he had. <laughs> yeah, <maybe. laughs> the one, no. that one guy. Marshawn Lynch gets in for that one run. Dude, I was seeing him come in 
to play. Like, obviously, Alvin got like 20 carries this week, but like the fact that I even saw David Johnson on the field makes me sick. Like, get yeah. him the fuck off this field. <laughs> Dennis Allen is the next guy that needs to get the fuck out of the NFL. Like, I'm sorry, uh, you, Jack. You're preaching, you know, you're preaching to the okay. choir, bro. Like, yeah, Dennis no, Allen I'm, is the next. Yeah. Do they hate him down here. there? Yeah, no, I mean, he's not all he had to be was not Sean Payton, and everybody was going to hate him, but um, yeah. Mm. Like there is no excuse, and like we, I mean, Jack talked about this like a couple weeks ago when I was watching. We were watching the games. Like there is no excuse for Mark. Mark Ingram, hell of a back. I mean, he has had a hell of a career, hell of a backup. I mean, he, he was even a good starter for a minute, but like, not now. And 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 I don't want it. If you have Alvin Kamara on your football team and you are giving the ball to Mark Ingram more than it's infuriating. him. And you've got David Johnson in it. It makes me sick. And like also, you, Alvin you, Kamara is gonna be 28 years old next year. And God, yeah. fuck! You're and you're literally wasting the prime of his career. Like, yeah, like it's yeah, he's right like that. next year is if and next year he could still. I mean, that's the only good thing about this year is that maybe next year he's got you know he's got a little more juice at 28 than most guys because for the last season and a half. You have fucking literally, I mean, even like the, the year before that he had a monster year, like in games, but like there were some, you know, he's kind of, it's just like, he hasn't been, is it, now he's like been the workhorse that he was, yeah, like as he last, was. Like and it's years. like, what the fuck? But, um, I mean, when you have Drew Brees who would piece people apart on the short pass, cause that's all he could throw. And Alvin Kamara is like the best short range weapon that you could theoretically have in football because he can run it and he can catch, like, you never know Good what hands. he was going to do two and two go together you know you don't have that combination anymore so yeah that's Dude, speaking of sean payton though where the fuck's he going he's coming to cleveland really you think he's gonna risk it all for your babies your sweet baby girls i don't give it a year well i don't know because i heard that he was payton's putting together a band right now and I, i'm thinking like fucking denver maybe yeah do you think condoleezza rice has him on her radar could be, but I, I'm telling do, you right now. Do you guys see? Be. Do you guys see why I sent that in the group chat? Apparently, Denver <laughs> Denver is going to be consulting with Condoleezza Rice to find their next head coach because it works so well in Stanford for Stanford's head coaching job, which Probably was better only than John Elway, which was only filled a week ago. So I don't know how they can already determine she did such a good job picking out the coach. But where did where, what's her fucking connection with football? Why does she keep getting like tag, tagged and shit? I Dude, no they but she ever gonna, she, she, she said I, the Browns. She said we wanted to invade. She goes, I want to invade Iraq, and it was during their military initiative, and she's just kind of been a layover since the Bush administration. Yeah, Condoleezza, man, she's just fucking, she's everywhere. I didn't even know that she was uh, still doing oh, because football. of her father. Because of her father. What the fuck does that mean? Don't you know uh, who my father is? Apparently, her well, Simeon Rice. Yeah, I'm, I'm, Jerry I'm Rice. Really <laughs> Jerry, yeah. Every Rice. Is Dude, what, if, <laughs> what, what if Condoleezza Rice was married to Jerry Rice this whole time and just nobody like the, ever brought it up? Jerry Rice that's, is her dad. Simeon Rice is her brother. That's so wild. Dude. That'd be crazy. They're like, damn, so Condoleezza. Uh, that's, I, I did see that though. And I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe he goes to, to Denver, but I, I really, here's the thing. I don't think Jimmy Haslam is going to make a Jimmy Haslam move here soon. I really believe so. And I think that the the pressure of this like what are we doing throwing the ball on fourth and third you know like what are we third and three like why are we throwing 31 yard bombs on third and one you know i i think that kevin stefanski i think he's a damn good coach and i think he's a he can play oh, call see. his ass off but i think he tries to get too cute i think he i think he out coach i think he confuses he out like coaches himself sometimes like i feel like he just like I feel like he just does too much sometimes, and uh, but I but I think that that would be a good spot for for dude. I would take Sean Payton. You know how sick that would be. Yeah, but, yeah everybody want, everybody wants Sean Payton. The Saints want Sean Payton still. I can't can imagine Haslam ditching Stefanski this year. Sadly, I don't. Yeah, we'll see. Well, I, I don't think, think it, I don't get a big one. I I I don't think it's worth it. I mean, I, right. I'm not well, saying that Kevin's saying. one of the best, but. He's probably in that ten to fifteen range of head coaches in the league. Right. And well, hundred percent. And and I mean, he had a we had a top five offense in the NFL with Jacoby Brissett. Yep. So like, I mean, you can't argue that. And the guy knows what he's doing. But I I just feel like he in in critical situations there are just he the the not running the ball. We thing give up on running the ball. It kills me. 
Uh, that's our offensive with- line's fault, actually. Our offensive line for the last four weeks since Ethan Pochich went down has been bottom five in the league. Here, okay, but here, here, let me tell you something, though, real quick. I don't care if Nick Chubb has ran the ball 47 times for negative 50 yards. I'm going to give him the ball 48, 49, 50, 51, and 52 times. Yeah. He is the best running back in football, and I don't give a fuck mm. how bad the running back is backs have been i don't care how i don't care if we don't run an offensive line out there he is the best offensive weapon on the field give him the fucking ball and and i and and i don't again i don't care how bad he's been if you're if anyone wants to tell me that throwing the ball 31 yards downfield on a third and one instead of giving the ball to nick chubb and like the chances of nick chubb getting one yard or the chances of deshaun watson completing a pass in cleveland winter and negative in in nine degree weather and 30 mile power winds 31 yards downfield i mean i i I, you know i'm saying like give it to nick chubb 100 out of 100 times and it just drives me fucking nuts that we don't do it so ethan poches was just back this last week or he's about to come back i know that he's He's designated for return so so we better i mean the season's over at this point so at this point we need to be just balls to the wall. We just need to try to finish the season out strong. Or here's the thing. I think we should probably shut Nick Chubb down, to be completely honest. I think we just don't even rush him out there. Let Kareem Hunt, uh, Jerome Ford, and uh, Dearness Johnson finish the year off. And, and and you know, and uh, the season's over. But the the play calling, I think, is an issue. And he, and like, I agree with what Pepper's saying. The, we're not going to move on from Kevin if there's not a big fish. Now, if, if, somebody, if somebody came to Haslam and said, Sean Payton and he's got he's got a team built like you said he's he's he is putting together a team and he is re- he wants to coach the the Cleveland Browns. I think Jimmy Haslam jumps all over that. Hundred percent. I hope he does. I hope he does. Now let me ask you guys this: De- Denver's got the coaching, the most immediate coaching need. They don't have a head coach. They just fired Nathaniel Hackett. Yeah. Could you imagine if they surprise or if they replaced him with Hugh Jackson? Jesus Christ. Fred, Freddy, Freddy Kitchens. Well, fuck, dude. Did you see the one guy just said no? <laughs> the guy on there. <laughs> the one guy. Wait, somebody has already rejected the job offer? So the guy. So the fucking guy the, in Denver. The, inter- so, the interim. So, yeah. So the guy who got the interim coach job, who is like the plate, who like oversees plate, whatever the fuck play designing or whatever. He was the second guy they asked because they asked like the D coordinator or the, they asked one of the other guys and he turned the job down because he thinks he has a better ch- He's already a candidate for next year. He's already thinks he thinks he's got a good chance hurt his, and he thinks it will hurt, hurt him. He basically said, I don't want this. I want to stay. I want my, I want to keep the job I have now for the rest of the year. And then I'm getting the fuck out of here. Like, he said, oh. like Captain Let's Ride's going to fuck me. <laughs> well, and another thing is, is that apparently he was brought in by Nathaniel Hackett and they're really good friends. So that was another thing. He was like, you just fired my good friend and I'm not taking over this shit show that my friend just built. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And uh, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Um, Adele was texting me last night and was saying, I had, I didn't look into this, which I should have was me being lazy, but he was saying that he had heard somebody breaking down how the Denver Broncos can cut Russell Wilson in the off season and still like have some money. Like there is some way that they can work this to where they can cut him in the off season and save some money, like have some face left over after this. Bro, that's insane. Do you do it? You, you, it's the sunk cost fallacy, right? At, at play, it's like, do I keep putting money into this losing? Like, we know it's not going to work, or like, I just don't think anybody could swallow it's too a, fail, a, fail, it's a failure that big. This, early. I gotta see what Russell Wilson does the rest of the year because yeah, yeah. last game yeah. he didn't look terrible. Oh, he was awful. Well, he got blown weekend. out by Baker Mayfield, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was bad. But I think I think you have to see Russ because it. This is what you want to do. You want to draft a quarterback, see right? Cook. Yeah, yeah. See Russ Cook for at least four or five games. Let the rookie get used to it, and then I I I think you I you probably try to restructure his contract with them. I don't I don't know if Russ will do. Well, that. here's the I thing. Don't. But that's the thing. Like, do you take that chance of because what if you can't restructure? What if he's not willing to budge? And like because right. like, because all things you're because here's the thing. You're hearing all these things about how I think we're starting to learn who Russell Wilson is a little bit. You know, I mean, they, he's there's always been. A reason, you know, all the rumors of his teammates hating him and all that shit and whatever. But now you're seeing like he, there's a lot of people who think he got Nathaniel Hackett fired because Nathaniel Hackett never really got too much. I mean, he's a bad head coach. Don't get me wrong. Guy did not belong in the NFL. But I think, I also think that there is minimal 
I don't think he had a lot of say in what was going on. I think Russell Wilson was given the keys when he got there. They basically gave up the fucking future for him. And I think he is running this offense. And I think Nathaniel Hackett has limited, had a limited room to step on him. And, and, and I think that it was just a bad situation. And I think that whoever comes in next is going to be, you know, and that it's going to be that same situation. So like, if you can just find a way to just get rid of him at the end of the year, I don't know. I mean, it's it's one because because we talked about this earlier and we were breaking down the Titans. Remember, like we know the Titans are not going to win a Super Bowl, but it's hard to move on from a lot of these people because they're still most likely going to win a division every year. They're probably at least going to the right. playoffs. So, like, you're now stuck in this this situation of I don't want to blow it up because then we're just kind of like it's hard because you're blowing it up and like you're kind of giving up playoff contention now you know, or like, you know, or do you want to keep putting money into a, a team and like keep pushing it forward with this team? That's really good, but not good enough to win. You know, it's like a weird, you're like stuck in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I think that that's kind of where they're, you know, I, I don't know. It's, it's a hard situation, but I'm getting rid of Russ. Get the fuck off my team. Sorry, Andrew. I mean, I know you're going to the finals. We're not even going to talk. We're not going to talk about fantasy football. Cause I will kill myself live, but, um, Russell Wilson sucks. So I, I, I'm, yes, he I'm, he, I'm he's a perfect subway mascot because he's a six foot sub. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's so good. <laughs> the, uh, the, the fucking the, the 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 video where he's dancing with the fucking remote and he's like, "Dude, ew, he's like, you ever done anything dangerous? <laughs> I have. I have. He's, it's like he's and he's he's like, dude, and, and he he's just been a meme his entire." career between that and the sierra stuff and all of his like russ has been a fucking joke like he he got bailed out by a historically good defense in a super bowl pete carroll is an award and and, and and that defense carried him to a super bowl and the other super bowl he he was in he lost so i mean i don't know i just i'm well, not yeah we, and you can also not, you can also he's writing he's writing his previous achievements pretty hard for the last right like, well and you can kind of say that pete carroll's kind of kind of to blame for the mat. I mean, you could give him an award for masking it, or you can also say that, like, I think that he also did. I like when you go to that Super Bowl. I mean, he lost a Super Bowl because of of him wanting to give Russ the glory. You know, what I'm saying like it's it's one of those things. You know, I I think that I and I, I think that was a lot of people had issues with that. I think a lot of people knew that you know Pete was kind of giving in to, to the to the rust thing and and i mean when you're throwing on the one yard like that and you lose a super bowl like that i mean i mean they that was the time that was the the moment that the legion of boom basically quit on that team i mean like the yeah. the richard sherman's the the bobby wagner i mean bobby wagner stayed around for a while but like you know earl but all thomas. those cam, cam chancellor or uh earl thomas you know that basically was like them saying like well, we're tired of putting on like jack said historic fucking defense performances and and now we've lost because Russell Wilson instead of handing it to our our one day hall because I assume Marshawn Lynch we're talking about people going to the Hall of Fame is Marshawn Lynch a Hall of Famer? I think so. Yeah, I think probably. he did. Though. Probably. So now you got a you've got a, a Hall of Famer, a more than likely Hall of Famer running back behind you, and we're throwing it the ball on the one yard line. You know, so it's, and you, you you got Doug Baldwin or a Hall of Fame running back. Yeah, yeah, Doug fucking Baldwin. You know, it, <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's like come the fuck on here. So it's and Devin and, all, and also Malcolm no Butler. Shit. On a yeah, side note, Devin Hester sucked. was a Seahawk. Like, if wow. you think about Malcolm Butler's career, not that anything was ever gonna pass that moment, but just talk about like. The it's kind of like the uh, Azakim or something. It's like the or it's like it's just like the, the sometimes the unexpected heroes or something. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, like, like everybody saw that hero performance and thought like, and then thought like this was like the expectation. Now and Ricky like, Prol would be the better example. Yeah, he this. never he never reached. He never did anything like that again. And who gave him the was it the Titans that gave him, who gave him the money? Who paid him? Titan, Titan, Titans paid Titans. him big to play yeah, in their secondary. That's what it was. And he was right. trash. Trash. Because I remember, like after that year, because he left. Right, he was like the first Super Bowl MVP to like yeah. leave his fucking team. And like, yeah, I remember that. And yeah, it's it's kind of just like yeah, you see that, and you're like, damn, like he never. You gave you basically paid a guy for one play. You know, like you paid yeah. him because of the high. He made his whole living off of that one play, dude. I would too. I mean, yeah, yeah he's I mean, so it's. Bad. But Russell Wilson sucks ass even worse. Yep. So yeah. get rid of him. I don't want to watch him play football anymore. And I'm glad he didn't come to the fucking Eagles. You should have, there was you should have held on. To, you should have held on to Drew Locke. You guys fucked up. Drew Locke's out here. Pay, look, letting pay it the hang. Price. Now, Drew and now Locke Drew Locke's, was, 
He was well, sleeping. Li- yeah, and he's living the life now. He's sitting behind the goat. And yeah, you know, he knows he'll never, have to, he'll never have to see the field. Have you yeah. seen him on Gino the sidelines? Smith. Dude, he's such a fucking character. Drew Locke is up there, dude. Front of the fucking sideline. He's patting back. He's loves slapping it. asses. Loves he's it. cheerleading out there. He loves well, his job. I think, he, I think Chase Daniel called him in the offseason and said, look, you're from Mizzou. You're never going to be successful. This is how we do this. This yes, is how this Mizzou is quarterbacks. <laughs> yeah. That we, are the, we are not starting quarterbacks. We are the best lifelong backups you'll ever get. So just sit down and shut up. Be a he cheerleader. Goes, I, I want you to watch the first three seasons of Blue Mountain State. You are Alex <laughs> Moran in this situation, brother. Yeah, you are. Like, li- you even the, look like Alex Moran. Like, like dude. Drew Locke is. Like, he, he is, is real he life. Alex is Alex Moran? Moran. Yeah, like he, yeah. Drew Locke is Johnny Manziel that didn't get hooked on coke. In worst case scenario, he gets the Aaron Rodgers treatment and gets to sit behind an actually good quarterback and like develop and you know. I would love it if Drew Locke in like six years comes out at the age of 30 and is just gunslinging it. That'd be sick. That'd be fucking tight. After sitting 10 years behind Geno Smith, the goat who shout out to fucking, uh, I mean, I guess there's a guy, Jack can name drop. I'm not going to name drop the guy because I don't know if he wants his name out there or not, but in the other league that we're in, there's like in Geno's jaw, he, he is, he won the league this year with Geno Smith as his quarterback. Yeah. Congrats, Jake. Okay, yeah. So Jake Dobry, congratulations, my man. Dobry. That, that's that's a fucking accomplishment. I mean, like, dude, like I was like, what a fucking like no one ever thought like, the Gino thing was almost a joke for all obviously it was a joke. It was a year, joke up like, until this year. Yeah, yeah, up until this year, it's like he really Gino's I mean like they wrote him off and he didn't write back. Okay. <laughs> fucking right. I, I wrote him off now. He's QB two on my team. He's a fucking well, yeah, and and look, and and it's only because Jalen's got a python. But if if it wasn't for Jalen, Gino baby would be would be number one. But yeah, I uh, I don't know. I I I'm I'm happy that Drew Lock is is found his footing, and I'm glad that he is he has found a nice spot on the bench, and he can be. Uh, I enjoyed him on on the uh, pr- uh pre Chase Daniel. <laughs> yeah, well, I enjoyed watching him on the the Seahawks. Have a pretty cool. Uh, they do like a lot of like cool like footage and like stuff like that social media stuff. So like they were doing a lot of like coming onto the practice field and training camp and stuff and like Drew Drew Lock being a fucking character and shit. And he's he's pretty fucking funny. One so. one of my favorite stats, uh, and obviously we just mentioned him, so you guys will all know who I'm talking about. But it's who broke uh, Eli Manning's streak of like 200 games started for the Giants, and the answer is Geno Smith. God, what a fucking savage, dude! They 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 sat him and started Geno Smith. It's, I mean, well, uh, speaking so him I just and put, Kurt Warner. <laughs> Kurt, I always forget Kurt Warner being there, dude. I always forget, like whenever I see a Giants Kurt Warner. Like, that is a weird. Like, that's that is they, a weird one. They yeah. ran Feels him bad. and they ran Brenda. And he and he gave it. Down. He gave the job to Eli, right? Yeah, it, they drafted Eli. He was struggling. They brought in the old vet. Well, they didn't draft uh, Eli, right? Or was well, that San Diego? They Char- drafted Chargers. And then they traded yeah. right And he there told him to fucking lick a ball sack. Chargers. Yeah, he said after you did to my brother. <laughs> so that might be another JJ TJ moment where he's like, you after what you did to my damn brother? I ain't playing for you. And they fucking sent his ass well, to the Giants. Well, Archie Archie was also like, dude, I know what it feels like to play for a franchise that fucking sucks. And you do not <laughs> do this. Like, he, was, he was on the Aints during the Aints years. He was the know? quintessential like, Aint. Ain't, yeah. yeah, dude. So Ain't, he's like, yeah. dude, trust me. Being it's not worth it. Cool, it's not worth <laughs> it's it. It's not fucking worth it. No. Um, <laughs> it doesn't but, get better. Yeah, I forgot that Kurt was a. Uh... God, that's so weird. So he that was where he went right at because that, that was the only play for the two. He went to the and then he went to the Cardinals after Cardinals. that. Or did he go to the right. Cardinals before? So he went to the Cardinals exactly. after the Giants. Yes. yes. Two thousand. Really? That's when he went he to the played. Super Bowl. Yes. Yep. Yeah, yep. dude. God, that was a Steelers. The Steelers. Sport. Yeah. 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 New, York, and... New York Sports Press made Brenda Warner cry when they ran them out of town. She remember like Kurt Warner was struggling. Like, you know, he was always like he always had like a broken finger and he kept yeah, fumbling the, pinky. the fucking ball. Yeah. This is before Brenda was discovered... always the mouthpiece, dude. And so she would be calling like 101 ESPN in St. Louis and being like, yeah. it's not his fault. He's got a broken finger. Blah, blah, blah. She's trying to start pulling that shit in New York. And people are like, you old gray bitch, get the <laughs> fuck off. 
Yeah, yeah like fuck that, you, you fucking can't get the fuck off my radio station. They, they shamed her. You look like she a started, boy. She started <laughs> dyeing her hair blonde again, like to look young. And she got the fuck out of that town. The radio is mean, a bitch. The radio jockey's like, that Kurt Warner's wife, she's an ugly dog bitch. Fuck that lady. Now yeah. back to 98.1 Church yeah. FM. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. Fuck Brenda Warner. Fuck Brenda Warner. But uh yeah, that's your husband uh, will always be a gr- grocery bagger to me. Yep. Yep, he ain't shit. Well, speaking of New York quarterbacks, I, I posted this today or on Christmas. I, I want to talk about Chris Sims. Somebody posted about yes. Chris Sims yes. uh I've talking about Zach Wilson. Uh, and I think this is the greatest thing. So we, if you're, if you've listened to anything, we hate Chris Sims here. I hate Chris yeah, Sims. Fuck you, Chris uh, Sims. Yeah. can't stand the guy. The guy doesn't he wasn't know what shit. He doesn't Worst know what the fuck the he's talking list. about. He was a bad football player. He doesn't know what he's talking about. So somebody dug this up from last year and here's his take on, uh, Zach Wilson. So if anybody, if anybody doesn't know, Zach Wilson basically just lost his career in New York this past week. Cause like we, we said at the beginning of the show, Mike White's Mike Mike White is walking around with his donk of a dick and and Zach Wilson and, and showing out and and I mean even Flacco had this fucking offense rolling. Okay. Now we got Zach Wilson who looks like a prepubescent girl and he sucks. Um and he got it out there in New York and put on one of the stankiest fucking perform. I mean, look, Thursday night football sucks already. Okay. And when you can make Thursday night football suck more. I mean, come the fuck on. I mean, it, we haven't done a space in two weeks because football sucks. But uh, Chris Sims here, uh, so so somebody obviously went back and said, okay, well, Chris Sims is, a re- is an idiot. Zach Wilson sucks. So at some point in the past, they had to meet up. And they did. And for people that are listening, Chris Sims uh, in, uh, for what is for, April of fucking 2021, he says, as for the Jets, this likely means they're all in. So this must be right for the draft. Uh, yeah. Leading up to the draft, they're all in on Zach Wilson, which I obviously approve of. My number one QB in this draft feels like I'm watching Mahomes again. Exceptional throwing, best arm in the draft, amazing off schedule. Okay, okay, let me let me tell you when he posted this tweet because I know exactly when it was. It was when that video of fucking uh, Zach Wilson came out when he was at the BYU open practice, and he threw that ball across his body. Across his that body. Went for- then it went for 60 yards in the air. It was a dime. Yep. But if you actually watch that video back now, it all makes sense why Zach Wilson's a bust because the only audio you can hear on that video is Zach Wilson after he throws it going, woo! Like he was, he was happy and he was shocked. That should have been all of our first telltale sign that he had <laughs> no idea that worked. He, yeah, he's Holy like, dude, I, he's like, there's 60, <laughs> he goes, I just threw a 60 yard bomb. That was the first one that landed in the bucket. And these dudes are here in front of me. Like, Holy fuck. He's like, like nudging himself. On, he's like giving him a little shot on the arm. He's like, good dude, shit. That Zach. one throw at a, job, in Zach. a BYU practice facility earned him millions of dollars. And that's, dude, what a fucking joke. I mean, that Zach, was, is, that's got to be after this. Because I remember when that, when that video came out, and I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm not too proud to admit it. I, when I saw that video, I was like, Holy shit, this dude's got a fucking arm. He's gonna, you know, take the top off the league and feed these wide receivers. I just, I've never once in the NFL seen him throw the ball over 30 yards. Like, consistently. It's terrible. I mean, it's bad. Where is that huge arm that he had? I I feel like that was his bit. Now it's like, where is it, Chris Sims? Well, now you're like, oh, he can scamper a little bit. It's like, no, he fucking Mahomes. can't. He's a Mormon dude from Utah. You want to buy a scamper quarterback, buy someone who can actually run. Like, yeah, and here, and, and if you're talking about people who can scamper, scamper BYU quarterback. Well, here are the people that were drafted after him in that draft. You want to talk about people who can scamper? Trey Lance went third. So obviously, uh, Trevor Lawrence went one. Zach Wilson went two. Trey Lance went three. Justin Fields went eleven. Mac Jones, Jones went fifteen. Uh, and then like Kyle Trask, Kellen Mund, those guys are obviously your trash. Uh, Davis Mills went 67. And then you got Ian Book, who went 133, who obviously is a nobody. And then Sam Ellinger, we just saw him, who can't play football. Yeah, but also not good. But Trey Lance, Justin Fields, Mac Jones, and Davis Mills. I mean, I'm ta- obviously you're taking all four of those guys over Zach Wilson. And even I Davis mean, Mills. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. He's all right. Yeah. I mean, he won't he won't have a job next season, but yeah, he definitely lost that that whole like maybe Davis might be the guy thing is a wrap. But and and it was and 
usually I'd be like, okay, what do you say when like are you surprised when you put that kind of level of talent around him? But it it, it wasn't just the level of talent. Davis Mills looked bad. Yeah, he really you know, just did not. I'd like to see Davis season. Mills like sit behind like a vet, a good veteran for like a year or two. Yeah, he could sit uh, by he could sit behind fucking uh Drew Locke and learn how to be a fucking cheerleader. Chris Sims can because Chris Sims can sit on his lap and sit and spin for all I give a shit. Dude, Chris Sims's career <laughs> makes Dan Orlovsky's career look so fucking good. Chris Sims is the saddest fucking came out of was he it was a Texas Longhorn third round pick and he, even with a third round pick he's still disappointing. I think Dan Orlovsky said some shit over the week about like it might have been about the jets him saying he, he he right now could play for this jets team and get them into the playoffs or something like or he said oh, something yeah. about get and, and Stephen a smith was like well you have to be in bounds to do that like, <laughs> oh, like it was just like it was just kind of like the whole panel was just like dan shut the fuck shut up. The fuck up okay and you couldn't play football when you could play football. So, like, you're definitely not playing football while you got gray hairs and fucking wearing suits on ESPN. Like, he you know how you get a job at the quarterback ESPN? of that Detroit Lions 0 and 16 team. Yeah. And, like, you know how you get a job at the ESPN? You suck at your job, like, while you played for the most part. <laughs> unless you play, like, unless you're, like, in the crack ass of the dawn. Like, when, like, you're Keyshawn and, you know, there's a few guys, but, like, most of the guys on ESPN are washed. Trent Dilfers, you know, those kind of guys. So. Fuck, fuck Richard Sherman. He should not fuck. be back on Monday Night Football, dude. Well, Thursday Night Football that and and that's the thing. Like, that is. Thursday, Thursday Night Football, Football sucks. Like that is a ter- like. I like the whole the crew. Everything. The crew I mean, Al Ma- Cody Gonzalez is is cool. I don't see. I don't like to- Tony. I'm not Gonzalez even a big fan. Tony. Me. Uh, Tony can suck me. Fucking what's his name can suck me. Uh, Ryan. I I was a Ryan Fitzpatrick fan before this, and he even he is on my fucking nerves. Like he's goofy. they're just they're not. They're all trying too fucking hard, and then I just don't. And then Andrew Whitworth makes me want to puke. Like and I, I so, like Andrew Whitworth. He is just I liked so him before this. Annoying. Yeah, like he like... he's just so fucking obnoxious. Um, There's too many of them, honestly. Like five is just too many in my opinion. Yeah, just give. Yeah, just give me Al in the booth, and it's like Kirk, Kirk Street. Kirk, give me Kirk. Give me Kirk. Give me I Chris like Kirk. Kirk I, I like to be cool. I liked Al and Chris Collinsworth. Everybody always thought, or whatever it was, the Chris. What was Chris Collinsworth combination? Yeah, Chris I like Chris Collinsworth, but he's not yeah. blowing Brady. Yeah, yeah. I, I Chris Collinsworth. Now this Collins is Collins. a guy he's who a you know. That's his common line. Now this is a guy who will stick his hands wherever he wants. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> what, what are you the... even talking about, Chris? Thursday night football, the one hire they got right, Taylor fucking Rooks. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Taylor, Taylor Rooks, Rooks is, like, is front office. Just, just pull one up. Can we get a picture of Taylor Rooks? Yeah, before I bust. Do, on do, it. Do, 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 you know who we're talking about, Jack? She does a lot of NBA. No. Well, she's a babe. Which one do I pick? Just pick any. We're at one twenty seven. They're all. They're all. They're all. They're all, they're, we're reaching. We're we're almost to our hour and a half here. And before we get out here, like we didn't get to talk about this World War Two thing. That I want to talk about. We're not. We'll, we'll bring it up next week. We'll save it. Oh, Dude, she looks sexy, and she Dude, wears she deodorant. Is. Apparently, <laughs> she wears fucking. I, good. I tried. She wears Old yeah. Spice, baby. I know what that. I know that look. That's what happens Dude. in my pants. They go all white like that. Taylor Rooks is a is a dime. Yes. Um. But before we get out of here, so like, so there's a few things we didn't get to that we can push till next week because uh, I do want to talk about that fucking that guy in the bomb thing. But um, oh, the shell, Ooh, yeah, the shell. I do want to talk about that next week. But I do want to before we get out of here. I uh, Stuart is a big F1 guy, um, and I and I we were talking about this kind of last night because for for anybody else that doesn't know, I my girlfriend got me a, a PS5 for for Christmas, and I got GTA 5. I've always had GTA 5. I beat it a million times. I ever had it online on Xbox, but I just started a new one. And Stuart and I are going to take over the world. So while we were taking over the world, aka the lion's den, fuck with us. Um, I asked him, I was like, what do you think about this F1 thing? Because I think I, it kind of blows my mind that F1, who, which is like this worldwide sport. And like, I feel like is almost as diverse as almost any sport, maybe in the world. They come out and tell you that you. They basically tell their drivers that they can't make political statements, and I guess what that they can't wear political. So I guess that 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 it entails shirts, merch. <laughs> um, yeah, for, for the last few years, it's 
it's been very common for you know like uh lewis hamilton arrest the cop right, that right. killed brianna taylor uh sebastian vettel has been very outspoken on climate issues you know it in, in f1 it's over the last few years it's been on it's on track to become carbon neutral as a sport which is incredible considering how much of a traveling circus it is globally that being said the fact that they're telling teams and drivers that they can no longer uh make political statements and what they wear what they say that's political that's political right there but, but they don't want they to just add- had too many animal activists gluing their hands to the track it's a safety issue yeah, those like, we, can't, we, can't, we can't make pit stops because some bitch glued herself to the track. <laughs> right, dude, this has got to stop. No some, bitch mad, some bitch mad about the temperature and fucking in, in, in Wyoming. You know, saying she's pissed off about. They're trying to prevent Greta Thunberg from getting hit at 200 miles an hour by Lewis Hamilton on the f- corner four. Just who fucking. This, who is this child on the, on the fucking racetrack? <laughs> No, but, it, yeah. it's it's some bullshit though. They, <laughs> this is the same FIA, the, the governing body that keeps making deals with all these really shady oligarchs. And so is Formula uh, One like FIFA? Do FIA and FIFA are very similar? They're one letter apart, so that means yeah, yeah. They just just get the F out, you know. Get the yeah, get the old get the F out, get the old F out of there. And yeah, uh, the, the FIA, the FIFA, NCAA. I mean. Where there's big money, there's shady shit. Always, always. Is, is, Vince, gonna ta- is Vince gonna take over Formula One now? No, this is good the- shit. I heard Vince, I heard Vince is. I, I heard Vince is gonna make a comeback in 2023 in WWE. That's what I heard. So we'll is he gonna come out? That. Is he gonna come out to Bischoff's old music? The I'm oh, back <laughs> and better and than a, ever. Than ever. Yeah, no, that uh, that's that's the shit. I that would be. Well, that, I mean, that's kind of lame. That I mean, it, it's it, it kind of makes sense though that the FIA would do that just because it's like, okay, you saw what happened. How like FIFA had to like bend over its own back to like live up to all the Qatar's like political and censorship, didn't. and yeah, they just they just fell in line, and did whatever Qatar said. No beer, you know, all that shit. So, no back um, am, am I surprised that these companies that like are only are only worried about earning maximum profit don't want to like do politics yeah i'm not surprised is it a shitty thing to do of course so yeah. i think that's just, i think that's just kind of i think this is pretty black and white yeah i just yeah Oof. definitely i mean i just it's a it's just kind of wild that like i said a, a sport that's got i mean i guess you're right with the fifa stuff too but you know fifa and soccer and, and this racing it's just two of the biggest like uh, diverse sports it's in the global. world global yeah, sport. it's a global sport. You know, I mean, there it's there's big American sports and then there's big world sports. And and like, you know, you think of like stuff like baseball. You know, we're we're talking about baseball earlier, and like some parts of the world don't give a fuck about baseball. The whole world cares about racing. The whole world cares about soccer. You know, or football. You know, so it, it's worldwide. It's just a big, it's such a big fucking sport. So it's just kind of wild that when you've got some of your most popular drivers like Lewis Hamilton and, and some of your like the biggest names in the sports are kind of so popular because they're they're popular with the young crowd because they're so outspoken and they're so kind of edgy and they're and they're they don't really they're not scared to say that shit i mean lewis hamilton there are people that straight up hate him just because of just how loud he is you know and and when you're winning like he was you can be as loud as fuck as you want and you know people hate that so is what it is i think that's it i think we're good i was just scrolling through i was just scrolling through i think I guess we'll save the shelf for next week, but yeah, I think we're it. We're at 130. Oh, shout out, shout out. Rest in peace, Franco Harris. I gotta say that too. Rest yeah. in peace, Franco Harris. Lost a guy from the Immaculate Conception. Uh, uh Immaculate Reception. I said conception. But <laughs> reception. Did they, did they ever say what took him out? I don't uh, know. Cause like I remember that an NFL 100 commercial, you know, with, with the Marshawn knocks the ball down, the fumbles, everybody's going after it. And they recreate the reception, and you see Franco Harris get down. And he catches it off the top of them shoelaces again. I'm like, this dude, motherfucker, can still move. They had to do that, and that was only just a few years ago. So, yeah, I, I still see it as a, as a mystery right now. Maybe, maybe next week we'll be able to update you guys. All right. Well, next Stay time, uh, what is today? So yeah, so so we will be dropping this obviously on Wednesday morning. So uh, maybe by see Thursday, you next we'll... year. 
when we yeah next year well now we'll do a space well we'll, we'll, we're gonna do it well thursday night if the game is good we will have space uh we've kind of just been playing it by ear because we've been getting on there and 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 we'll do a space post game and then we'll talk like the whole time about something else because the game sucks so bad so if the game is good (laughs) um we will see we'll see you guys thursday and we will maybe have an update on franco harris um but yeah recipes franco harris um legend legendary pittsburgh steelers go browns um but if you guys are out there make sure what did you say he was a good ambassador for the game. Good ambassador of the game. I mean, literally changed the uh, the whole game plan of the Steelers going forward. So, you know, guy's a legend. But on that note, uh, this has been Pop Culture Rehab, uh, episode 28. Thank you guys for joining us. Make sure that you guys like and subscribe. Click the bell so you get notified when we drop. Uh, make sure you thumb up our YouTube videos. Um, we're, make sure you go on our TikTok. We're really pumping that out. Uh, Stuart's got a good video up of, or of a Christmas story. If you guys want to hear about Stuart getting fucked on for Christmas, go watch our, go to our socials and watch. But on that note, we'll see you guys Thursday, maybe next, if not next Tuesday, Wednesday. So you guys have a good night. We'll see you guys later. Peace. Bye.